is going on youtube it's brendan from market makers i hope everybody's having a fantastic thursday guys before we get into the show today i have a great show for you but on a serious note i was caught red-handed i wanted to share this with you guys there's been a lot of theories conspiracy theories conjecture about what motivated somebody like me to do a youtube show so i came in spring or summer of 2021 from an investment bank I've seen a bunch of different theories in my YouTube comments, but this guy caught me red handed. So I wanted to congratulate him. And since it's the truth is out there for everybody to see, I want to go ahead and share the comment with you. Uh, Lee, go ahead and throw that comment up. I think you're too kind. I think the guy is a hedge fund plant. They know retail text to social media and they need a new stick puppet every year to get you to trade the other way to their own position so they can take your money. Now, Lee and I talked about this, whether or not to release proof of this. Um, I talked to my attorney here in the United States, Alan Dershowitz. He suggested I just go ahead and release the audio and come come 100% clean. So uh, Lee, go ahead and play the audio to back this guy's claim up. Hello, Brendan. This is the real Ray Dalio. I just want to say, you are doing a good job being our hedge fund plant. Remember, we need you to mislead retail so we can steal their money. Our plan is working, soon we will have all the monies. <laughs> Welcome to Market Makers, everybody. All right, let's go ahead and get into the show on a serious note. Guys, we're going to look at the VIX, the DXY, Brother Bitcoin, the S&P. I have an interesting cycle to show you. You've noticed the thumbnail. Um, we're going to talk about some serious topics here. Look at the indices as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the VIX is just having problems passing this 14 spot, 14 area. But this is a bottoming structure here in the VIX. Again, max complacency in the marketplace. For those of you not familiar with the VIX, when you have the volatility, when you have the VIX shoot up, it moves inversely with the S&P, meaning back in the pandemic times, the VIX hit an 85, okay? Typically, in big market crashes, you're going to see the VIX spike up above 50. So we haven't had that in this bear market cycle, but that's coming to a theater near you. Let's look at the DXY because the big thing now is everybody's just predicting the death of the dollar, right? The death of the dollar, the tides have turned, uh, you have the BRICS currency that's going to be coming out and everything. The dollar's still a safe haven. So my premise is still the same. When the markets do sell off, you'll see a rush to the dollar. You'll see the dollar come up. You see the dollar holding support here moving up. If we get a reciprocal move, you're going back up to 104 spot five. And we'll find that out in the next week, what the pathway near term is for the dollar with PAL putting in that quarter basis point rate hike, which is 92% priced into the market, and how hawkish he is. You could see the dollar rise up. This would put pressure on cryptocurrencies. This would put pressure on um, the markets in general. So we're going to track that, and we'll see if we get that reciprocal move. Let's look at the euro dollar. So I shared this with you guys that we had the key resistance here, one dot one spot 618, and the price here, one spot 12449. Now, Full disclosure, I shorted this on the Discord and I got stopped out by this ridiculous candle, this nice short clearing candle. I had a really tight stop loss, probably too aggressively tight, but I knew this was going to happen, okay? The dollar isn't dead yet. Will it eventually be dead? Absolutely, but it's not dead yet. But this is just, this is bound to happen. Now, miss this trade, obviously. Like I said, I got stopped out. So what I'm doing here is the 1272 at one spot 114. I want to see if this can hold at one spot 114. And then guys, I'm trading it 
as I would a double top if the dollar still shows strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the fib retracement down to this level, assuming maybe it comes down and kiss this level. And so then I'm looking at the 618 at one spot, one, two, one, four, and the 786, which is basically right back at that resistance line here of the 1618 at one spot, one, two, four, four. So in other words, this move, guys, this is the move I'm looking for this okay and the way i'm going to trade this most likely is use this either as a stop loss a tick above it depending how much this pumps up and of course where this actually makes a lower high or if it holds support and comes out i don't want to be hurt too bad on this trade but this is going to be in confluence with the dollar and i'm waiting to see what pal does as well on wednesday so let's go ahead and look at the s p Couple of key things. So I respond to everybody in the comments, especially the people that are polite, even if you have a separate view from me. So if you notice that, it's probably one thing that separates me from a lot of other YouTubers is I actually answer people's questions myself, not some staff member and somebody just clicking hearts. So guys, if you do like my content, if you enjoy these videos, definitely click the like button, click the subscribe button. If you want to help support the channel, we are not monetized because we play clips all the time. You want to help support the channel? Check out the two exchanges here, SimpleFX. There's no spot on SimpleFX. It is a pure trading exchange. Originally found it as a Forex exchange back in, I think, 2011 or 2013, somewhere around there. Been trading on there a long time. You can trade equities, commodities, metals, and a handful of cryptos, including Bitcoin. With our link, you do get up to a $5,000 instant first-time deposit bonus. It's instant based on your deposit, guys. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to roll it over. It's there to be traded with in your margin. So you can check them out if you want to trade only cryptos and have a access to the myriad of crypto coins out there with no VPN, then check out Bing X. All that information is in the video description and our Discord if you'd like to join our community. Both those exchanges will pay for your first month. If you have any difficulties, especially you old heads out there like me that don't know how to work Discord, don't understand how to get on the exchanges, message Lee in the Telegram. Just download Telegram, message Lee. He'll be happy to answer you. All right, this is important, guys. So this co this ties in with what I'm showing you on the uh, thumbnail and the title here. So this is 2008, 2009, the great financial crisis. A lot of people have been making a big deal in the media. You don't have 20% rallies. Right now, the S&P is on a 20% rally and a bear market like this. And you have, you know, you have all the economic indicators telling you, this is what they're saying, telling you this is a strong and robust economy. I played you that litany last video, that montage about a soft landing. I want to show you some things that, you know, I find amazing. You guys hear me talk about the seven year cycle, the Shemitah cycle all the time. So this yellow line here is when Bear Stearns failed. This is in the Shemitah year as well. The seven year cycle, March, 2008, Bear Stearns failed. You know, when SVB failed, New York Signature Bank failed, right here in March of 2023, the same month, also the spring equinox, okay? So SVB failed, we went on a 20% rally so far. What happened in 2008? Bear Stearns failed, we went on a 15% rally. But more so than that, guys, I just wanna show you how common these bear market rallies are for major moves. You have a 24% rally here off of this next low. You have another big rally here, a 26% rally. So both of these rallies are bigger than the rally that we have, and this is not the bottom, okay? And back in .com, we had six 20% plus rallies. So we have currently in our current market a 20% rally. It could go higher. We're going to look at that when we get to that chart. But I want to show you some interesting things here because – we had a bank failure in 08. The Fed has it under control, right? Ben Bernanke, who was the Fed head at the time, did not see a recession coming for the economy. Jim Cramer on CNBC, all the big business news people did not see a recession coming for the economy, did not see economic disaster coming from the economy. We're on a 15% rally. Look at the next local high we made after that sell-off. The next local high was August 11th. So the week of August 11th, August 14th is within that week. Go to the current market. When is our next pivot? August 14th. Literally within the same week, going back on that seven-year cycle, back on 2008. And what happened after that? Massive, massive sell-off 
going down to your bottom. You drop 50% overall, 15, 57% peak to trough in that seven year cycle. So the seven year cycle back then was 2007 to 2008, September 07 to September 08. You bottomed the following year in March of 09 at 666. Biblical. <laughs> 666. So if the if it, the seven year cycle is to play out the same way this time, our bottom would be this year. But as you guys know, everything is getting pushed out, It's getting pushed out with the Fed not raising rates aggressively enough to tackle inflation. It's getting pushed out with the two trillion dollar deficit that we're running, all the trillions in stimulus we ran. The Fed's forecasting Q3, Q4 for the recession. We could see a bottom this year or the bottom may happen exactly like the great financial crisis cycle and looking into the spring of next year. So we know the bottom has never happened before a recession in the history of the market. The leading economic indicators, guys, I looked at them the other day. When it when they were minus 3%, they have predicted with 100% accuracy every single recession. They're at minus 8% two and a half times the normal recessionary level. Now, what's interesting is the S&P is part of that leading economic indicator index. Could you imagine what the percentage would be, what it, what it would be negative if the S&P wasn't where it was right now in the price? So this is interesting. Some of you will think this is coincidence. Some of you will understand what I'm talking about because the market is a living, breathing organism that moves with natural law, okay? And it's a pattern that repeats every seven years going to to the 72 bubble, the dot-com bubble, the 87 crash, the 94 bond crisis, all the way to where we are now. The seven-year cycle can wreak havocs in the market. So it's something you should always be aware of because if you were, you would have caught some of the NASDAQ dropping 36% last year. You would have caught the S&P dropping 26% and Bitcoin dropping 75%. Let's go ahead and move forward to the daily pattern here. So this is the pivot pattern. Again, you know, that key pivot date here of August 14th is coming up. What's going to happen between now and then? We have PAL. We still have earnings. I think Apple um, and some of the big tech doesn't even come out till early August. I wouldn't be surprised if we just have some type of volatility of ups and downs in this range, chopping around kind of like we did here, okay? Chopping around till we get to August 14th. I think that's going to be a key pivot. Again, this is a pivot pattern that we monitor for people new to the channel. We monitor this very closely because it has caught precise tops, precise bottoms. Look at this wick way down here, precise bottom, precise top, all the way looking at 61 days essentially, which is uh, phi or phi expressed as, a, as expressed as a number of days, right? So not only is the percentage retracement 61 spot eight, important in the markets, but same with the days. If you're doing Fibonacci sequencing, you can look at five days, eight days, 13 days, 21 days, 34 days, 61 days, 55 days. So you can look at this and you just see a pattern that repeats over and over again. Some pivots have only provided little drops, 100 handle drops. Other pivots, two of them have provided a 9% drop. And of course, the largest pivot so far has captured a massive drop of 19%. That next pivot date, we traded this last little one here too for a 100 handle plus drop. The next pivot date's August 14th, guys. So we'll see what happens between now and then. That's the pivot pattern. And let's go ahead and look at this on a fresh chart here. So I have my wave projections here that we're looking at. Again, 1618, I had 4544 as a key resistance area that I was monitoring based on a Fibonacci wave projection, a harmonic cycle. 4544, we got above it. We just bounced off of it actually before recording this video. We're at 4555. But another way, you know, I can do this projection because I was trading based off this pattern here. Another way I can do this projection is a much smaller projection here. And I can do it this way. And you can see that accuracy that Fibonacci can give you. Let's throw on Kepler's triangle, two spot zero five eight, and bring this thing here. Let's see exactly where we got to. Just under it, 4599, as you can see. Oh, missed a candle, there we go. 4602 is what we are looking at here. 
for Kepler's triangle. We'll see, we'll see if this can come up to this 4602 or if we're just bound to start losing more momentum here because we're on top of the 1618 and we're holding it for support, 4544. If I wanna look at this from an XA perspective as well, I do several Fibonacci projections. I'm always looking for a confluence of data points here, guys, when I'm doing this. And I look at this from an XAD perspective and we nailed 4579. We got just above the 4580. So this, this projection's more accurate for resistance and support. So looking at this, and again, the 2618 will be at 4647. So if in theory, if you were able to flip 4580, you could go up to 4647. Obviously we're having some retracement. When we start looking at how stretched the market is, we can simply look at our momentum indicator, MFI. We have bearish divergence here as well. We had our high here in the market on that high, lower high there. And then we've had the MFI roll over as price has gone up. So here's your 21, okay? Whether you're using a Bollinger Band or just a 21, this is my 21 volume weighted. This is, this is your mean reversion. If this is to retrace, you can look for it to try to move to the 21, which is roughly 4436, more than 100 points down from where it is. Now we're gonna have a lot of different things happen with earnings. Netflix reported higher subscriber growth, but lower earnings. Tesla reported higher earnings, but margin compression. And both of those stocks fell, okay? So this is a mixed bag. Remember, you're in an earnings recession. Remember, they always like to lower the targets so that they can beat the targets, but the big money knows what's happening. Retail, no idea, piling in the tech stocks and uh, AI stocks. Anybody's gonna say AI over and over again. So watch those levels to sum that up. Watch those levels, 45.26, these are the CFD prices. 45.26 at the 1618 for support. 45.80 for resistance. You start losing one or the other. I guess it's a daily time frame, so you only have two candles up in this range. You wanna see if you bounce off the 1618, come back up from the 45.26, roll over for a lower high. We'll have another video out Monday, of course, guys, to keep you informed on this. So we'll see how this holds up. Bitcoin, how is this affecting Bitcoin? Well, again, the bull case, market symmetry case, geometric moves here. If Bitcoin, one thing I can tell you about Bitcoin is going to have a big move coming in. That could be to the downside or the upside. I'm going to show you how I know that in just a moment. But upside projection gets you up to 39,791 with a lower target here on Kepler's triangle at 34,770. Downside could also be a very real case, especially if the markets have topped. So if we're going to look at some downside projections, you can also see we have a nice Fibonacci pattern here as well with some excellent ratios, basically the one spot 128 for BCD, a two expansion here from uh, XA to B. So this is a very powerful Fibonacci pattern as well as far as ratios. I guess we're looking at retracement levels, hitting key numbers, but something I wanna show you, and I'll show you this on the other chart. Looking at this chart, so a couple of things I could tell you, we've been going sideways for a while, right? Basically since June 21st, we've been going sideways, very clear defined range, 1618, 30,823, you get candles above it, but it's been holding very clearly as resistance. You have your Wyckoff base down here at 29,797. You can see it's been clearly holding as support, but you have a squeeze coming on. You have volatility compression, you can see it in my momentum master indicator, these green dots. You have a squeeze coming on in volatility. You can see this expressed as well, which is simple Bollinger Bands. You see the compression here and the Bollinger Bands. And when you have compression, you get explosive moves. And you're tighter here on the daily. Larger time frames are more powerful because you can go down to 15 minutes and see this, and it could be super compressed. But larger time frame compression is more powerful. So you're below the 21 right now. But Obviously, you can see this. This is how you get flags, right? You can drift down and then pump up. Is that what we're doing? Drifting down and pumping up? If the S&P does want to flip 4580 and move up to that 4600 plus target, you could easily see Bitcoin do this. If the S&P starts failing and rolling over, that explosive move could be to the downside, guys. Because again, we've completed market symmetry here in the drives. 63% up. 22% down, 60% up, 20% down. 
and we took out our previous high and now we have this slowly drifting down pattern here with a lot of volatility compression this thing can swing up and give you more of a um, more of a upswing here on the pattern to these targets or it can start breaking apart so the key is the confluence watch the dollar watch the equity markets and watch and see what happens with pal on wednesday so let's look at gold again i know a lot of people are bullish on gold guys i want to show you something with gold i've showed you this before this is a three-day chart okay we nailed it up here on the short we shorted this great drop from 2055 all the way down to below 1900 okay but let's look at this Let's just throw on. I want you guys to understand this because I own physical metals. I feel like I have to I have to advertise it every time because people think I just hate on assets, you know, <laughs> part of my hedge fund master plan. But um, gold moves with the equities. Okay? <laughs> this is the S&P in orange. You see this gold moves with the equities. So this is why in, in a great financial crisis, gold sold off 34 percent. Fibonacci silver sold off 61% when the markets crashed. You can see there's delays and lags. We look at your peak, your peak, your base, your base. It's rallying and basing with the S&P. The S&P is on an upswing. Gold's on an upswing. Okay. Just be aware of that. Gold and silver recovered faster in the great financial crisis than, than the uh, markets did, but they still sold off dramatically. And I want you guys to understand that because I'll show you the higher target projections, but what I think is going to happen on gold is what I covered last video and we almost got there. I said, watch, I said, watch the 618 at 2000 and watch just above it at the 786 at 2029. We got this candle up since then at 1987, right? Just above the 50% retracement mark. Watch these numbers because what I think you're doing, again, you have a head and shoulders pattern, a bunch of different ways you can do this, okay? You can zoom out and look at the uh, higher lows in the range. Again, it's gonna depend on your market view. You can look at the higher lows. You can also look at the head and shoulders pattern that's forming here or just a macro double top. But because I know it moves with the equities. That's how I would trade it. I missed the trade on gold here for a long. I was busy looking at other assets, but this was the place to long it at the 618 retracement at 1900, guys. That was where you long it. Now you're in this range of you've already got up to almost 1980. Well, you got up to 1987. If this could stall out at 2000 or 2029, I'm not looking at longing gold to make $20. That risk reward ratio is skewed. Now, certainly if it flips it and keeps moving up, would have been a great place to long, but this was the safer place to long down here at 1900. Here, I'm waiting to see if we get a pattern failure and we can short this as a massive head and shoulders and or double top, okay? It's all about risk reward. We can see our MFI crossed over here, gold pushing up. Want to see where this gets to, if it gets to overbought again, you can see this tracks really well, elemental. It tracks really well with gold and silver watching the MFI a volume weighted RSI all of our indicators are available to you guys for free by the way when you join our discord it's a gift for joining and you can join for free so again that bull case guys if I'm wrong about gold it just wants to keep going up or if D pal comes out dovish says oh we're gonna pause again after this next rate hike you could see gold start moving up that upside targets 2171 I personally think we're going to get that bearish structure shape, though. I would love to be wrong because I'm not in a trade, but this is just what I think is going to happen. So I just want everybody to be careful and protect your money, okay? But that 2171 would be my upside target. Silver did exactly what we talked about last video, guys. Last video, I told you to watch the 786, 25 spot, 27. Look at that. Hummed ringer right there on the dot. 20, 25, 26. 25, 27 within a penny. Within a penny, you hit the 786, guys, and that's where it's struggling right now. Again, silver, you can make the same argument as gold. You have a higher low structure uh, coming up here in the pattern, but you're also forming what could easily be a macro double top. This is going to be a confluence with the dollar and confluence with what happens with equities. Okay, so upside risk. There's, there's not enough upside meat on the bone for me to want to long here. I'd rather wait and see if I'm correct and this stalls out for a short and get a nice move down. And let's go ahead and look at the NASDAQ. Again, gave you this level, 15,645 was a key level I was monitoring. We pumped up above the Bollinger Band more than two standard deviations. 
Ravens. We got a nice doji here. And of course we have the move down with Tesla showing weak, uh, even though Tesla's numbers were good with the actual math behind it, Tesla's margins being compressed, Netflix losing earnings. You see this come down now. And on the daily time frame, unless you get some type of peak just drop, this is going to hold support at some level. And this is when you start looking at your bearish shapes like double tops. Okay. So we'll see what happens with this. Let's do a uh, fib retracement if we can here with this impulse. Let's see what we're hitting. About to hit the 382 at 15.5. What is that? 15.555. So this is what you want to watch. 15.555. You want to see this hold and not drop too much below the 618. And your 21 here, just on a simple moving average on the Bollinger Band, is right down here as well. And that's roughly 15.255. You want to see this hold this area if it's going to bounce. You start losing the 618. You have potential trend reversal uh, incoming. Okay. So watch that. And let's look at this on the MF. Again, bearish divergence, just like the S&P. You have your peak price here with your peak MFI, lower high on the MFI, higher high in price, bearish momentum divergence as well. Let's look at Tesla real quick, guys. Tesla, again, just like we discussed, we hit that target we've been talking about for a long time, 299 on the 1272 of our larger pattern-based projection here. You got up to 299.29, 299.65. I make jokes about this all the time, guys, but this is people always ask me, like, what other TA guys do you watch? I don't watch any of them. I can't watch guys draw boxes and say, oh, I have this zone here, and this zone is exactly where I want to see if price gets to, because if you understand Fibonacci, you can get precise precise hits on targets or extremely close to the target and not block out this massive candle box here and say it's a resistance zone. Yeah, I know that. That's obvious. <laughs> I want to see where it could get to. So look for Tesla. Try to hold support at 268 spot 16, guys. Same deal here. I mean, this is a gap down. You can see Tesla try to come up fill that gap and you might end up getting a head and shoulders or a disjointed double top. Tesla likes to make these moves. This is why we shorted it here or was it here and got a 27% drop in Tesla shared that on YouTube as well. Let's look at the Russell real quick. We'll start wrapping this up after we get to the European indices. Russell selling off as well at 1963. Look to see if the Russell holds 1946. And again, same thing. In general, if you hold support, you're always looking for some type of retracement back up to the upside. And if it fails, that's how you get your classic double top, your ABC pattern, okay? And if it flips it and comes up, then you could have the Wyckoff uh, range here of accumulation and or distribution just like this before you get a breakout. So always watch that. Your upside risk 2013 here on... on um, the Russell JPN guys. So my JPN people were asking me about my wave projections because again, look how accurate my Fibonacci waves 33, 633. I spent a lot of time on the JPN and sadly I haven't even traded it yet. I had this projection. I missed this. I'm so busy. I work like 60, 70 hours a week. I take zero days off. I try to take Saturdays off, but I'm working all the time, guys, between the Discord, my own personal trading, and just family life and stuff I got going on, having a ranch with cattle and everything else. But 33,633. So we have 33,633, and price got to 33,252 within $400 on a $33,000 plus asset. Okay. So I had this nice move on my projected wave five. This wave projection for this harmonic cycle goes back to 2018. And this hit the wave projection. And then we sold off, came up, sold off, came up, lower highs all in the range here. Now, the JPN is a little bit tricky because the Japanese are doing YCC, yield curve conversion. They're intentionally keeping their yields low on their bonds. This is allowing the market to recover and have this euphoric rise. Remember the 1989 bubble, the, uh, the largest bubble at that point in history of the land bubble and the equities bubble. Japan did not defeat their all-time high from 1989 until they got to just recently. I think that 1989 high was somewhere down here on 28. But until this recent run up, they were not able to defeat that 1989 high. And now we have a series of lower highs, but you can see you're clearly in Wyckoff here. You have a bunch of different patterns forming here as well. This is a daily time frame. If I was going to trade this once I find something that I like, 
We have the XCD ratio here, basically at 618, which is a perfect retracement. And then you're falling back down from that. I want to see, because I'm looking at my indicators as well on a daily, you're starting to get towards that trend exhaustion level. If we get one more wave up here and try to catch this more towards the top, if that's possible and it starts to fail, we're just getting the beginning of some squeeze compression here on volatility. The longer this can chop around in a narrow range, you'll get volatility and one way or the other, you'll get an explosive move. So whether I'm trading that to the downside, maybe off of a fractal or trying to short this based off of a fib, if it tries to come up for a lower high or peak out of here, I'll be tracking that closely. I'd really like to get a trade on the JPN. All right, the DAX, people are gonna ask about it. I'm not interested in the DAX really, guys. It's really defined here, you can see essentially you are trading in a very very clean Wyckoff narrow trading range some down thrust some up thrust and now you're just stacking candles in this band here 16.2 to 16,000 and again I think that was your all-time high up there yeah it's your all-time high so that's your all-time high and Germany's officially in a recession. Eurozone inflation, by the way, I saw that your core just made a new high, right? This is after everybody's talking about how inflation's under control. Your services inflation just made a new high. So keep that in mind. Germany's in a recession. Other European countries will be following, as is China, even though they fudge those numbers. The US will follow shortly as well. Now, the French 40, I definitely am more interested in. This is a very, you get these patterns on smaller interest daytime frames a lot, but you don't often get triple top roughly at the same resistance on large time frames like the daily. So you have a triple top and now you have a double top that just formed here at the CAC. Okay. So if you look at this is 618, 7388. So what you're hitting now, if this ends up holding here, closing here, I would zoom into a smaller time frame like the one hour or even the 15 minutes to see what we're dealing with here as far as the CAC, because this again shows you you have key resistance, your upside risks, 7437 if you were to come up to this higher level but this is one of those types of trades that you may be able to take with minimal risk if this comes up or it holds right here at the 618 looks like it's going to get rejected and i would probably just place my stop loss above the high here in the range above that fractal 7437 where this could have some nice movement to the downside but again with pal coming up with Powell coming up on Wednesday, guys, I'm hesitant to take any types of big trades. This would be like intraday trading or some short-term trading because I don't know what he's going to say. I'm anticipating he'll be hawkish. I'm anticipating the price and rate hike will happen. Powell often fumbles when he talks, so I don't know what he will say. And if he says anything dovish, you could see markets move up. So just always be aware of that backside risk. Long video was intended to be short, but it was fun. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you back Monday. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them as always. Consider checking out our room or check out our sponsors to help us out. Take care, everybody.